what is going on you guys today i'm going to show you how to twist their time remap or at least the way that i do it um i'm sure you've all seen the now large variety of twixter and time remap tutorials because a lot of creators have made some already uh but i'm going to show you the way i like to do it um that works for me uh so my method is based off of Peach's old method and off of Smokey's optical flow twister tutorial so without further ado let's get started so first things first we're going to cut this clip up uh, the normal way of doing it is if you press command b or if you select the blade tool and click the left mouse button like so however there is a sort of faster way to do this if you have a windows computer or a keyboard that connects to your mac computer then uh, this will work but on a mac computer it doesn't necessarily do what i would want it to do and i'll show you what i mean by that so on the regular keyboard uh, if you cut your clip and whatever clip or part of the clip is selected, if you press the delete key, not the backspace key, but the delete key, then it will move the clips in place. But this doesn't work on the Mac computer or Mac laptops keyboard because it only has a delete key, which is also the backspace key. And that doesn't work for what we're trying to do. Also in Peach's old tutorial, he shows you how to change the keyboard layout to where instead of using the blade tool or command B to cut a part of your clip, you just simply use the H key to cut the clip. And this will help in the long run when you are trying to twister. So yeah, and then he also shows you how to make compound clips using only the C key so I would refer to his tutorial for that to change the keyboard layout so he goes into DaVinci Resolve preferences and then does something around here I believe so but we're going to cut this clip up and I'll be right back and one more thing before I go to cut up the clip so Sometimes when you cut up the clip, sometimes there will be more than one duplicate frame. So as you can see here, one, two, three, four. Uh, so it's about three, three or four duplicate frames. And yeah, and then you backspace or well, press the delete key to get rid of that. But if you just cut it up frame by frame and you just remove one frame it'll still have duplicate frames so i recommend just going after the frame that you cut out like so and then just one two three four until it changes in the frame like that and then just get rid of all the duplicate frames every footage or piece of footage has different duplicate frames in between each piece of movement so i would just say monitor that when you're twixter in that way you can get the smoothest twixter possible so i'll cut this up okay so here we are with all the clips cut up so a workflow tip is if you press this button and press here and you press the plus button it will make a new timeline show up i use this to twitch their clips sometimes because sometimes on the first one i'll have where my edit will be and i'll make the twister clips here or i'll put a edit that i found inspirational here that way if i need to go frame by frame then i can do that uh, if i'm trying to recreate a transition and whatnot so yeah so next either right click and go to new compound clip and press create or uh press the C key if you did the key adjustments so now I recommend naming this pre one and then naming every pre twix clip uh, and 
set it to have a number because that makes it easier to keep track of your clips. And for my render settings, I don't do anything differently other than use render cache images. So, and I recommend making a folder with your main project and having a pre-twix folder and a twixter folder just to make it easier to keep track of your clips because you're gonna have to store both so save it there and render it out okay so now delete this off of the timeline and go to the folder where you have it stored and drag it here so now what we do is you go to the retime and scaling tab in the inspector and you set this to optical flow you set this to enhance better you set scaling to fill and you set this to smoother and if you press Control R or Command R, depending on your keyboard, this will show up. I recommend changing the speed to 10. You can change it to 25, but I feel like that's a little bit too fast. So I like 10. That way you can have more control over your clip. So now I'm going to let this render out because even though I am on quarter playback, I don't know why it does this, but it does this thing where the red line shows up even on quarter playback so I'll be right back after I render this out okay so here we are with it rendered out so now that it's rendered out you see we have a smooth tw twister relatively so now what you do is you go back to the project folder go to twister and name it Twixter one and like so and then it should save pretty fast uh, because the blue line is here so if you just do like that and export it it should export in a very short time like you see here so now that this is done delete this off of the timeline and now what we need to do is close resolve so I'll be back after I do that okay so now after you've closed resolve what you should do is go to playback timeline proxy resolution and change this back to quarter because once you open it back up it will be on full so now for the time remapping portion so just add in your twixter and now what you do is you make the whole twixter into a compound clip just like i showed you and we'll do something around 44 frames in a fusion clip uh, for the sake of the tutorial something like that so now what you do is you right click open infusion and you go here and i suggest searching up the compound clip so mine was compound clip three so if you just type three or the number of your compound clip then it should work and this here is my clip this is also convenient because sometimes you'll have like a sea of clips so it just makes it easier overall so now what you do is you shift space time stretcher and from here i recommend moving the frames and doing your thing on here before we change the interpolation mode which i'll show you in a second so what I mean is just go all the way forward in your twixter and as far as you can take it until it turns red and then move it back 
as far as uh, and then just take it as far as it'll let you and so for time remapping there's three curves that you can use there's an S curve like so just move this back like that uh, I recommend whatever whenever you do this your beat or marker should be on the steepest part of the graph Peach has a tutorial about S curves so that's really useful and he goes more into depth about that another curve we could do is a regular curve so steep at the beginning level in the middle and steep at the end a curve like that or you could do an ease in curve something like that So, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to do the regular curve. Peach also has a tutorial on time remapping. If you are interested in that, he has a new and an old method. I'm using the old method. It just fits me more. So now what you do is you press flow over here and check all of the boxes like so and this interpolation mode won't work without an optical flow node so if you press the media in one and search up optical flow shift space op optical flow like this and go to advanced now in Smokey's tutorial that I mentioned earlier he does six here and 11 here but in my recent videos I've cranked this all the way up so if you just like so it should work pretty well and it should be all right it looks pretty smooth and it cuts down on some of the blending and uh, frames so I just think it looks good so now what I think you should do is cut the remaining part of your clip and make this inactive so just disable it I recommend keeping this here in case you you are on resolve 17 and sometimes when you close resolve your fusion clips black out so the media in one goes completely black so in case that does happen you have a reference and you know what clip is what so you don't have to recreate the whole thing and create a hassle trying to find the clip that you used so yeah so now we're gonna render this out and I'm gonna show you the final result okay so here is the final result as you can see, it is steep in the beginning and steep at the end and smooth in the middle. And the Twixter looks pretty smooth. Uh, and that's because of the optical flow node and using the specific mode that we used. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. Be sure to comment and like this video and subscribe. And if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram and my photography page, link in the description for both of those. And I'll see you guys in the next one.